Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy, DJ Caveman. This episode motherfucking 43. Yeah, DJI Monkey. Yo, yo, yo. Chocolate Suavemente. Air Ray. All right. <laughs> we have a special guest. Special guest in the building. Yes, we do. Yes. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I'm ready to do some Sunday conversating. Saturday? It's Saturday. It's Saturday? Saturday? Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> right. We'll, right. 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 we'll fix it in post. Yeah, we're going to fix it. We'll fix it in post. We'll just change that to you. Yes, yes. Thomas DiNucci, everybody. Yes, Filmmaker, indeed. writer from yes. Providence, Rhode Island. Excuse me, Cranston. Cranston, man. Rhode Island. Yeah, My bad. Yeah. I'm, gonna get, I'm not going to get that twisted, but he's the writer director of the brand new movie that just came out called The Vault, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. It was one of the movies that I thought was next to heat because I really like heist movies. And I got really low in my volume. I don't know why the fuck I just did that. That was really somber and well, because people might romantic. be listening because it's yeah. like a high. Yeah, 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 but yeah, like yeah. I feel yeah, like I'm romancing a size it. But it was just thank you. Man. I just felt I just felt like Don. You brought like back Don Johnson like he was Mickey Rourke like you brought him back from the dead. <laughs> it was like where. I, I don't know. I haven't been following his career, but like, where oh, has Don's that been, Don's been doing big things, man. He was in, you know, Django. Nice. Uh, yeah. You know, recently. And, Which one? Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was in Django. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Don's, Don's, a, Don's one of those guys who's a veteran, man. He's been doing it for a long time, and mm -hmm. there's no question when he gets on set, it's just like, oh, okay. Cool. Put me here. What do you want me to say? All right. Ready? And in like two or three takes, you're like, all right, we're going to move on. Sweet. Next. Yeah, Don Johnson's a uh, uh, cosmic professional. So, how's everybody's weekend? Well, it's going pretty decent. My daughter got her hair done, so that's that. Oh, nice, nice. That's yeah, it was good. I went to a concert last night. I was down at Mohegan Sun. I uh, saw Godsmack play. Oh, uh, man. Wow. Yeah, Sully Erna, uh, the lead singer of Godsmack. Uh, him and I go way back because he was in my second movie, Army of the Damned. Uh, ah, nice. nice. Yeah, so Sully uh, uh, was basically the, the sheriff of this town that, uh, you know, gets under attack by this evil undead spirit. Uh, mm. And Sully's kind of like a, you know, in a bit of a, an action role in that movie. Uh, so we go way back, and uh, every time they're in town, go see the show, check it out. Um, and they're awesome, man. It's a, I think it better every time. It's a good old fashioned rock and roll show. Nice. I'm, I'm, I messed up last weekend. I, I didn't make it to the show last week, guys, so I'm very sorry. That's why I'm here. I was here earlier than everybody. I woke this guy up out of bed. So <laughs> no, I was already up. I, 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 I was it, getting dressed. I was like, oh, nigga, you had your shirt off. Let's stop. Let's yeah, because yeah, I got real. out the show. I was getting dressed. I was like, <laughs> let's be real in the combo. No, I'm just nah, kidding. Was hey, just man, real. maybe he was trying to get some uh, some morning cake before the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Afternoon delight. In the morning time. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> in the morning time. You know, breakfast in bed. Everybody get their peak hours. Yeah, you know, it was different. Yeah. <laughs> What's yours, D? I oh, mean, you know, I do stuff. Come on, man. <laughs> nah, I ain't do shit, man. I had a wedding. Mm. You know, I did. You got married? Cool. Nah, nah, nah. Oh. Um, it's uh, seven days of swan. Oh, uh, yeah. My lady seven. turns 40 on uh, well, Wednesday. Wow. Well, well, so, know. happy birthday. We've been doing something every day. Uh, so is that a know, thing? I never heard of that. So I mean, no, no, no. That's like her like childhood nickname. Oh, okay. So Swan, Swan. Uh, uh, oh. So we've been doing something every day. Last, I, I thought that was like some kind of like relationship thing. Like, <laughs> like, like we learned like, like, something. Oh, yeah, well, when it's a girl's birthday, it's called Seven Days of Swan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. could call it Seven Days of Whatever. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> that's cool. I was like, that's a cool. Made <laughs> it sound like a kiss and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh shit, seven days of swan, I like that. Oh man. So, we've been doing shit. Uh, last night we went to the battle cages because she wanted that smoke. Wow. Well, Except, um, she was fucking nasty in the battle cages. Ripped a few liners or what? She, 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 <laughs> she had a couple balls far and hard, and I was like, wow. Meanwhile, I fucking stuck up the joint. Oh, I need to go get it. All right, be honest. What, uh, number, what, uh, speed, what speed cage were you on? Uh, we, were in the, we were in the 50 cage, and then we w it was like throwing the balls in the ground, so we went to the 40 cage. All right. But she was still ripping them, man. She played a little bit when she was younger. I played a little bit when I was younger, but... Yeah, I remember. We used to play against each other. Uh, you wake up the next day, and you're like, why the fuck is my back... Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why my back's... A the magical muscles <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden like, show up. I don't up. do that anymore, do I? Uh, my swing is wretched so now, so I gotta go get a hitting coach, because 
I can't allow her to dominate me in the batting cages. Well, yeah, we used to and, play uh, against each other back when we was younger. Yeah, man. nah, like I used to be good at that shit, but yeah, I was on stereo. This will come back, man. It'll come back. He don't let no one win. He not, not even your child. Guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like it. Nah. She beat me once at mini golf. Once. I was like, you're never you gonna talk again. to her for three days. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not a poor sport. <laughs> you're like, this but, is three days of silence. Seven he's days not of silence. spiteful. Yeah. But, you know, I'm gonna get that run back. And, uh, I've been thinking about it the whole time. Yeah, no, no I got some bad <laughs> coaches. I'm about to work on my swing. You brought Chili Davis in for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> I might even go buy my Actually, here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chili Davis. Chili yes. Davis in the building. He comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here to help me with my swing. Oh, with, with, with the Can old man walk. Oh, Dude, man. Chili Davis is sick. Yeah. He would help you out. I'm sure. Chili, mm -hmm. Chili, come on the show. Make sure your elbow, your, your knuckles line up. <laughs> and you, you get your back elbow up by your ears when, you, when, when you're getting ready to swing. <laughs> Chili. Yeah. That was a really good chili. I thought he was here. So, in spirit, in spirit, he's here. Interesting story that I was talking about offline, but I want to talk about this shit. Mm. Um, yeah, the, tr the transitions are hard sometimes. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen it. It made national news. What's that? Motherfucking uh, people registering their cars in Rhode Island. Uh. Well, they're from Rhode Island, but they're registering their cars in Maine. Uh -huh. I had main license plates. Dun, 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 dun. So, oh. so there's a little bit of a scam. There's, there's a little bit of a legal, scam. A legal happening. scam, right? Well, it's like a legal thing. A loophole, but, I think. They you call know, that. yeah, yeah. A loophole. Here's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> In Maine, you don't have to pay. I mean, Rhode Island has crazy high taxes for your car and shit like that. And uh, taxes for your taxes. Maine doesn't. So, and they have a law in the books that allows you to register your car because a lot of people have cabins and shit. So basically, so they can keep their car up there. So what was happening is Rhode Islanders, like myself, found out about this shit. Why are you implicating yeah. yourself so easily? <laughs> yeah, well, he already said it, so he can't back. already said it. Oh. Here's the thing. <laughs> it, like, when you go on, like, I had, like, legit main license plates because it's legal in Maine. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is people were getting tickets in Rhode Island on main plates. Like, I know I, I drove back and forth to the airport. Like, mm -hmm. Easy Pass sends me mail and shit. Like, I'm like, I don't have these plates no more. And I just throw that shit away. Mm -hmm. But Rhode Island's not getting their tax money. Oh, so no, now everybody's no, in trouble. Is. They don't fuck around with well, yeah. leave it. I mean, look, if there's a potential to get a one up in any situation, the Rhode Islander will find out. Oh, for sure. Of it. Like, like, that's hey. what we do best. And if you drive, so it is. <laughs> yeah, like that's what we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Who do I know that could get this? Yeah, like, and it's legal. Get right. This at a better price. Nobody's well, breaking any laws except that they're not paying their tickets. So they'll probably just change something then. Yeah, the tickets are all going mm. to Maine. And mm -hmm. come to find out this place uh, is just an empty lot with a sign. So how many people? So they must be doing, like, must be like six people in, a, in an office. Oh, my God. They do everything online. I bought my, I got my plates <laughs> over the phone. Like, I paid hmm. a credit card. Never talk to a human. Over the phone. No, I talked to people. Oh, okay. Oh, well, but, but oh yeah, like, well, I sent you your plates. I did, like, a lot know? of email. <laughs> they came in two days. They came okay. FedEx. <laughs> You get wow, your plates that's now. Like, what is that a boot? Drive around. When you drive around today, <laughs> you'll notice all the main plates. Oh. Mm -hmm. But the state troopers are about to start pulling everybody over with a main plate. That's like, for sure. Uh, fireworks or a main plate. Uh, get on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gotta be careful moving them lobsters now. <laughs> <laughs> Big money if you can move them. Yeah, that the, interstate lobster game is the lobster awesome. black market. Yeah. Black, black. What, what, black, black market? market. How is it going for right now? Well, I, I don't. I don't want to try to implicate myself, but I'm. I'm not part of that game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not trying to move. No, well, number one, I don't drive. So I'm not moving nothing nowhere uh, with, without a license. Depends on how big the claws are. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk off mic. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll talk off we'll mic. We'll talk more like, <laughs> Wait, you know, it? there's the yeah, A4 okay. and then there's the A6. So the difference is the cook time as well. Make sure that it's tender. But no, we'll talk off mic about that. Either way. Yeah, so fuck this mic stand. Oh yeah, that mic stand was a man. You've been wrestling with that mic stand all night too. Yeah, my mic is just slowly Sleep. like down by my balls. I think the mic stand also so. thinks it's Sunday conversation. Yeah, it's like, you know what? You know what? He's sleepy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're up against it, so let's yeah. get right into this. Yeah. <laughs> to this Tom Tanucci situation. We had some uh, some technical difficulties earlier, so all the shit that we were going to talk about, we spent fixing those technical difficulties. But <laughs> oh, oh, like what? The Eckersley shit? Episode 43 show? Episode 43. 
Uh, no, but I mean, like, we always have, like, a list of other shit to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but Tom Zanucci was kind enough to come in the building. Yes, indeed. Oh, good, good, man. Let's, let's, uh, this was only 15 minutes from my house. A Rhode Excellent. Island native. Yeah, yes, Rhode Island indeed. native. Yeah. Yes. Actor. Yes. Writer. Producer. Director. Director. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where I never, never really set out to do all of those things. Hmm. But out of necessity, over the years, uh, you know... Uh, you end up just kind of uh, wearing a lot of hats when you're coming up in the independent film world. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you're just forced to do a little bit of everything. But it's great, you know, get to learn a lot of different ways to make a movie. And here we are. What's the hardest part, though, about getting a movie made? Is it the script? Is it like finding the right actor or a combination of... It's hard to say, man, because each part can have such specific uh, challenges that you're going to meet. Um, I think the script is definitely the most important part because you really can't do anything without a great script. I mean, you can hire the best actors in the world, but if you have them saying something that doesn't make sense or, you know, a, a poor story or whatever, people aren't going to like it and it's not going to work out. Um, so it's one of those things where I think the key is having a great script. Huh. And then from there is understanding that it is a collaborative process and you need to like step away from it sometimes and let other people come in and take your vision mm -hmm. and make it even better, you know, because it's one of those things where um, you're working with like at least a hundred people at any given time, you know, from a cast, maybe a cast of 25, 30 people, and then you've got a crew of about 50 people, and then you've got, uh, you know, a couple dozen producers of varying degrees that are working with you, and then you've got marketing mm -hmm. people once you sell the movie. Mm -hmm. So, so many people have their kind of finger in the pie and they're kind of working on this thing. So it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you have to be uh, willing to give up some of that control and go, you know, trust the process uh, because it's a, it's a long one. You know, I was just telling you guys when I got here, um, you know, we, we made Vault. Uh, Vault came out back in June, available now on demand, uh, be coming yes. out on Blu-ray uh, August 13th. But we made that movie uh, about a year ago, uh, back in May of 2018. Mm -hmm. And we wrote it uh, probably, you know, a couple of years before then. And that the story had been kind of a germ in my head for years beyond that. Um, like, I always wanted to make a movie about, you know, the Rhode Island uh, organized crime syndicate and, you know, Raymond Petriarca. Oh, yes. You know, that's that's some history right there. So um, it's a long process, man. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's very kind of, it's fun to just kind of sit back now that the movie's out and people get to watch it. You know, hear their take on it. Yeah, just set it and forget it now. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's great. Because it's like bringing, bringing that history of like what was really going on. It, it tells like like the, the true stories of like Rhode Island. And I yeah. when I travel and I perform and all that stuff and people ask me, the first thing they always say, usually I go into, I always try to go to a black comedy club to perform because... If you're doing comedy and you can't perform in front of your own people and make them laugh, where the fuck can you perform? True. So it's like, I tried and I did that. And he's like, where are you from? Rhode Island. They're like, they got black people in Rhode Island? <laughs> yeah. It's all in their history. They've mm -hmm. ever known as either Newport, Rich, or they've come from Providence. And they think it's very Italian based. And I'm like, no, we're a very diverse state, man. We got uh, all different types of people in Crete. That's so. one thing with Rhode Island that, oh, Providence in general, that people don't realize is that a lot of companies like to test market in Rhode Island right. because of so many of different... Yeah. yeah. Like, when you go to New York, you're not seeing a lot of Cape Verdeans or Cambodians or people from Laos. Mm. They're like, Cape Verdeans? They're like, where's that where's from? That? Like, so, like, Rhode Island does have a rich culture and a rich diversity. And I was going to say and uh, ask you, is, like, filming in Rhode Island, like, what are some of the challenges that you come across with actually having a film done in Rhode Island? You know, I gotta say, man, I've made a lot of movies in Rhode Island, and, and I don't want to say there aren't any challenges because every, every time you make a movie, there's gonna be challenges. But mm, true. it's smooth here, man. You know, people really gravitate towards the movies. I've mm. made movies in LA, and out in LA, 
you know, I don't want to say people are jaded by the movie business, but they've seen it a million times. Oh, they used so to. So it's no big, you know, it's like, what? They're, they're, yeah, I gotta mow my lawn. So <laughs> are you gonna pay me to not mow my lawn? Otherwise, I don't give a fuck about your sound. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mow my lawn now. Yeah. Whereas in Rhode Island, the guy who's mowing his lawn would literally like stop and be like, oh yeah, no problem, I'll stop you. Can I watch? Yeah, yeah, no problem, watch the show. And, and they're like excited to even think that I was a movie shooting across the street from my house. That's such a, a weird thing to think about. You know what it's like? So it's, it's, welcoming. it's like the Atlanta Braves. Like when they were so good, it got to a point where people stopped showing up because they're like, well, oh, you know what? They expected the Braves. Yeah, they expected <laughs> yeah, they're them to anyway, That's crazy. So. They're winning anyway, so I'm not fitting to pay this $4 for a uh, water. You know, so I, I could just watch this at home on TBS, the Superstation. Yeah, so. man, Ted Turner. Yeah. Shout out to Ted Turner. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's one of those things where Rhode Island's also great about you know we've got a lot of locations that are very different. Oh, yeah, you know, like, there's a lot of cool. You could be on a beach and then you could get in your car and drive 15, 20 minutes and be in downtown Providence mm. and you know shoot from the right angles and you know it could look like an even bigger city. Mm -hmm. And see, one thing that I I always appreciated about Rhode Island even though I don't like it as much being from New York, is, is that <laughs> one thing my father always wanted to show us was like the country and the apple orchards sure. and, and the lakes and the woods. That's one thing about Rhode Island that people really don't talk about. It's like New York. Nobody talks about upstate New York. No. no nobody's going to Utica. There's an upstate New York tree. Yeah, really? Yeah, <laughs> nobody's going to Troy. I thought it was just, well, I thought it was just <laughs> New York City and then Syracuse. Yeah, and Boston, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> Buffalo. Like, who's going to, like, who? Maybe I'll go to Buffalo to see a football game, but other than that, like, mm -hmm. what the fuck I'm doing up there? I ain't got no business up there. Huge Bills fan. Huge. Who, you? No. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, I was for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Is, anyone, is anyone a Bills fan? I was. Yeah, he was. I was. Yeah. Back there during the Thurman Why? Thomas days. Why? Like, Thurman Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I remember mean, that I back in school. If you're into, like, all-purpose yardage. Thurman Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Thurman Thomas was an innovative back. He could catch the ball, and you know, back in the day when guys he was one of the first hybrid guys. Like, yeah, guys weren't doing catch that Catch and much. run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was kind of like doing this mirror. You know, my hear what I'm saying? Like when you talk, it was like those headphones. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to find uh, it was like echoing. Just, that's the word. Echoing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So talk, they do mirror talking. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Swirl, Swirl talking. Swirl talking. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, to you mean an echo, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when well, you, you know talk, when it says it twice. <laughs> when you were um, <laughs> talking about the uh, <laughs> the collaborative and stuff, I did want to ask you a question, but I didn't sure. want to interrupt. Go for it, man. This is a Saturday conversation. Oh, Hold on, Sunday. When it comes to the process, and I always had this this thought in my head. Nice catch. Do you think that a great writing could make a shitty actor great? Hmm. I think. All right, I'll tell you what. That's a good point. He says, great writing make a shitty actor great. Uh, it can, but you know, it will ultimately make a shitty actor great. And, and I don't want to say shitty actor because nah, you know, no, maybe I should have said The truth that. is, I would never cast an a shitty actor. An unpolished, you know? an unpolished like actor. It, it just wouldn't happen. Like I, I would never put myself in a position. Um, but I should say, how about this? If an actor that I did cast happens to be struggling with a particular scene, uh -huh. when you really can enhance it is the editing room. Mm. I've seen some really, I've seen some really great performances be pulled out of the editing room in things called the pre-roll and the post-roll. Like there'll be times when, like you know, the camera's rolling, um, we haven't you know slated it yet, uh -huh. we haven't hit the you know mm. the clapper thing, Action. but the camera's rolling. So the actor might just be like sitting there and might just be like naturally talking or conversating right. or like react or whatever. Mm. And I've used that before and used that as like a reaction or cut that in as, you know, oh, he turned and looked, but he was actually turning and looking at the sound man and I was like, hey, can you fix your thing? Mm -hmm. So like you can steal little moments of human behavior that's a little bit more organic. That's great. In the editing room. You know, that's so great. there's like an old phrase like, uh, you know. We cut, yeah, they cut a really good performance, you know, for that guy. Wow. You know? <laughs> I've heard that phrase. Like, I've heard that phrase. Yeah, like, you know. And hey, that's the thing. Like you, you never really know. You know, that's the like if it would if it worked, it worked. You know, so I'm really for them. It's so crazy you said that because that that was like my next line of question, which I'm not going to do. It goes into the editing process. Like I feel like editing and ed whoever is editing any movie, there's I never see it's any scary, person man. that gets a reward, and it's the most. They don't have a, an Academy Award. They do. They, they, they do, do, but I've like, never, I've never 
a it's single. It's whole, uh, it's got a good point. Thing. It's like they never no one's talk like talk about it. No one's like name your favorite editor. And like what? everybody can name a few directors if they like name at one. least, but like it's hard to like name four or five really great editors. That well, see, know. the other thing too is I I, I thought that um, during this last Emmy cycle that they were kind of boycotting it because they were trying to cut it out of the broadcast. Yeah, they didn't want to show the technical awards. The technical awards. Which so is like, what the fuck, man? That's what, that's what all those, like, all those guys. Yeah, what the fuck are we going to yes. make a movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what. <laughs> and, and that, and that was the replace this with robots next? Yeah. And then you got a time frame, then a deadline? I've done that. I can see why those Ugh. people were upset, because, you know, that's literally the heart of, and soul of the movie. You know, the, the yeah. edit, the director of photography, the sound person. You what know, does like, the that best boy do? important. Best Boy is another word for What does the Best Boy do? Alright, so the Best Boy is basically part of the Grip and Electric team. They like oh, the movie. Know. And the Best Boy is basically like an electrician. Oh, So okay. like if, you know... It's just a weird name. It has to do with wiring and, you know... It's just the, the name of it all, Best yeah, Boy. it is. Like, you the best boy? It's like, I'm a man. Yeah. I'm the best man. I want to be a kid. I'm 51 years old. <laughs> so give me my respect, motherfucker. And then you got like, the question. You don't have to be so aggressive. Best, best sir. sir. You're the best sir of man. Mm. Uh, sermon. Yeah. yeah. Nah, yeah. You're the best Daryl I know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically, you know, the edit is key. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, Put so together the pieces. Hmm. Um, I worked with a really great editor on Vault. His name's Zared Shy, and uh, it was cool, man. You know, we went to Martha's Vineyard, uh, which isn't too far. He's got a studio on the vineyard, oh. and I didn't know what I was walking into. Uh, the guy was hired by my producer, Chad Verdi, and he was like, "You're gonna love this guy. You're gonna love him, Tommy. You're gonna love him. Trust me. He's, he's a cool guy. He's a lot like you, about your age, all that shit." And I'm like, "All right, great. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. You know, being open minded." I go into the guy's office, and at first it's like, what the fuck? It's like, he, he's got his, he takes his shirt off right away. It's like, hey, man, how you doing? Takes his shirt off. He's like, hey, listen, my back is like fucked right now. He's like, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to lie down during the session, but uh, make yourself at home. And, uh, you know, if you, and I'm a smoker sometimes, not all the time, but like when I'm editing. He's like, and, uh, you know, I, I saw you got some cigarettes. He's like, I don't smoke, but you can smoke. Go ahead. You know, I actually like the smell. And he's like on the floor, like writhing, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> seemingly in pain. Oh, I just met this guy. Love artists. <laughs> I just met. I literally just met this guy. Oh, yeah, he's he's like half section? naked, like writhing right. on the floor. In a hot yoga on session. On the floor of the editing studio. <laughs> oh, okay. And I'm like, and you know what? I was like, all right, well, shit. <laughs> Play a I, I didn't know it was down. that kind of party, but it, it, uh, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes, like, if you be your goofy self, mm. it really helps. Mm. Relax the whole situation, and, you know. Yeah. We, we're like to this day really good friends, and we laugh our <laughs> you know, we laugh our asses off every time we hang out. Oh, and uh, it was just like a funny icebreaker, you know. Nice. I mean? <laughs> so like, if you're because dude, when you're editing a movie, you gotta like be this close to the person mm, for always for day, days and days. And you're and, reviewing you know, like how you cut it. It's very really close quarters, so it was kind of like you know, hey, this is me. Mm. Well, all right. Be like, well, wait, did you put on some new lotion? Yeah. I can feel it against my arm. Like, you said that close. Yeah, like, put a shirt on, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's but, create uh, some boundaries. <laughs> yeah, but we had a good time, man. It was cool. And, you know, I'm kind of one of those people. He's like me in the sense that when I'm working on something creatively, I could almost do it all day and night. You know, I could right. be like, oh, yeah. like, I, like, that's the mission. It becomes, and I don't want to compare it to combat because we're not actually getting shot and I have a lot of respect for armed forces, but it is like, mm. we're on a fucking mission. And it's one of those things where nothing else matters at that moment, but okay, we're here to edit for two weeks, mm. you know, or we're here to edit, you know, 10 days in the editing session, um, you know, and that's all that matters. So I like working with people that yeah. they're willing to like, we're going to get up, we're gonna get some food. We're gonna start working. It's like a single Take focus a and a single goal. A little more food. Mm. Edit some more at night. Watch some fucking wrestling from the early nineties. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, do something stupid to like get our heads completely mm. out of the zone. Get back to it and maybe edit all night long. You know what I mean? And mm. then crash and sleep for a few hours and do it all all over again. Like I, that's the kind of creative work I like to do, and uh, and he's like that too. Um, like, I don't like to be one of these, like, chess by mail type, okay, well, I'm going to come in a session and send me some notes and, and I'll download the file and <laughs> I'll watch it. And there are a lot of people that work like that, but I like yeah. to be in there and be like, show me that take. 
show me this take. Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, you uh-huh. cut it there. Let me see. And we, and we go back and forth. And I mean, it gets exciting, man. It's like it's like I mean, it's nerdy shit. But like, and we're when literally you see it like, together, we're like, like high five. Dude, at certain moments when we see a cut that we like, we're fucking high fiving and jumping up and down. It's like we're, we scored a touchdown. And that's like the kind of energy that you miss when you do stuff like, hey, email me the link and I'll send you my notes. And, you know, we can yeah, do it that way. That's how you should feel. So, yeah, it's fun to be in the control room like that, sort of. Um, but, yeah, editing's fun, man. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the process because when you make a movie, like I said, there's this hundred people that kind of follow you around. I'm sorry, that follows you around like mm-hmm. a beehive. Um, and then when, you, when you're editing, they're all gone. So all those voices. Just you all by yourself. Right? All those voices. Are, <laughs> so it's yeah. like the guy who said this, or maybe we got to do this, or I don't know about that. You know, then it's like all those suggestions get piled on top of you, and you're like, okay, I got all these suggestions from all these great talented people, hmm. but now it's ultimately up to me to decide like what's going to get implemented, what's not going to get implemented, and how do we do this all in you know three weeks to meet our deadline? You know, deadlines are another scary thing. Oh um, yes. It's very scary to think that you might have missed the golden take. Like, what if we missed that? You know, oh, right. Like, yeah, what if yeah, I didn't yeah. see that one take? Or, you know, and that's why, of course, you have notes and things like that and script notes. And uh, But it's, it's nerve-wracking to think that you're going to do all that. And, like, oh. They're going to literally take this project away from me in, in 21 days. If, you know, ah, what are we going to do? You ever run across some people getting hurt feelings that you don't take their suggestion? Like, oh, man, why'd you go with that cut? Oh man, oh, I thought we were cool. Like, we're you ever run across that kind of? We're in an industry of artists, and artists hmm. have a lot of egos at times, and it's it's very easy to bruise some of those egos. Hmm. And yeah, of course, man, that's going to happen. And people are always going to kind of voice their opinions about that. And it's just part of the job, man. I mean, I was in Target the other day, literally in Target. Um, like, I'm like with my mom, but they're like shopping with her. You know, it's something we'll do once in a while to catch up. We'll do like an occasional target mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, like, it's a nice little thing my mom and I do. So we're doing our little target a nice mission. Bonding session. I'm like, you know, in the electronics section, I'm looking for some shit. And I see this guy with like this big, heavy beard, like approaching me. And he's getting like closer and closer. And I'm like, <laughs> this guy up too. You know what I mean? <laughs> closer. Who the fuck are you, guy? Kind of closing in. <laughs> so so I look at behind kind of, you. Kind of closing like in. The kindest way to say, who's this guy? Like, so he shows up and he comes closer and he's probably about five feet away and goes, you Tom Danucci? And I'm just like, no. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I, I just, I just saw your movie. And I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, wow, thanks, man. He goes, one suggestion, one, uh, just one. And I'm like, hey, yeah, here we go. Oh, here we I'm, go. Just oh, to, I'm just trying to get my cell phone charger here. <laughs> and he's like, fuck. So, you know, the, when I listened to the movie, it was the sound was a little, it was a little funny to set the audio. I was like, huh. And, you know, I try to babyface everybody. I'm not going to be it. I was just like, oh, no kidding. Well, uh, maybe the theater was funny. He said, no, no, I saw it. Saw it in showcase. I'm like, oh, uh, have a nice day. <laughs> and then this is the best part. He goes, hey, um, um, uh, can I get a poster? <laughs> and I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have them on me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. yeah I, don't, I just don't have it. Yeah, like I should have had like a yeah. little kit. Yeah, the, but it's just funny. So, shots and so my point is, like, what I learned from that encounter, and this is a perfect stranger. Uh, and look, part of me, I'm still kind of new at this. Part of me was kind of fun. It was a little, little mini ego stroke to just have some stranger. Somebody right all, all, be it yeah. a, a, a beastly looking wilderness uh, lumberjack yeah. like, uh, uh, family uh, trap in his basement, <laughs> probably. Oh, no, yeah, the bird's still, the bird <laughs> still the fact that he, you know, took the time to say, hey, man, I watched your movie. It was good, but the sound was a little fucked up. Thanks a lot, pal. Um, hey, it was nice. We'll watch it. But well, at least he came in everybody's peace. Everybody's gonna have something to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But at least he came in peace, he though. Did. Yeah, he did. Because at first yeah, he, he was setting like, it up like, yeah, he uh, like, 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 yo, man. No, he kept getting closer and closer. That's did. how you know. That's how you know you dated my right. sister. Yeah. Yeah. He's like Rhode Island's like. You, you never know how that's right gonna now. go. Right. Oh, so you never know. Guard. You want to be nice. You're but always on guard. Yeah. You never know how that's gonna go either, because it could be, oh, I saw your movie, or it could be like, oh, I think you fucked my wife. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Well, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you like two of sister. Where did you basically go in? You broke my sister's heart. Um, I bearded oh, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know Kelly. Are you allowed to bring that accent to Target? Yeah. <laughs> she was in love with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, you broke my sister's heart. But yeah, I guess the moral of the story is when you're putting yourself out there creatively, whether you're a musician, whether you're a, a painter, whether whatever you do, movies, whatever, hmm. everyone's gonna have something to say about it, and you just gotta like 
take that as part of a game and, mm. you know, understand that, like, everyone's got their opinions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't always matter. But, you know, sometimes, it, you know, one thing I found is this. You don't want to get too hung up on people's opinions because then you'll be playing a game of, like, not being you creatively. Mm. But, hey, if, if a dozen people are telling you the same fucking thing... It's probably yeah. maybe you should listen. Something you want to think about? Maybe you should listen to it. You know, yeah. like there is some good that can come out of that. And when I was first coming up, I used to be very negative about it. I said, "What the fuck would this person say? Like, why would you even tell?" Like, I used to get, I used to take it very personally. Mm. And I've learned to take it less personally mm. and just kind of have it. Like, all right, maybe I, what what good could come out of this person's suggestion? Like, what were they talking about? Maybe there was something. Well, the thing too is, is they, he's he's know. commenting about the sound and the movie's already done, so it's not like yeah, you're not gonna gonna do, do, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like you could go you back and change to this no. moment where I got into like, okay, there was one year where I was performing an improv show every Friday for a year straight, and is this stand up comedy? The, no, the improv comedy. It was an improv, improv comedy, comedy show, uh -huh. and I I used to get compliments until it took one lady to basically do what that guy did to you in Target, and I had the opposite like response to it. Like I kind of yearned for. Her thing, because I got too used to people telling me, oh, you're funny, you're great. Like, when mm. the fuck is someone going to tell me, like, okay, I took a step back and I feel like you're over the top. You're a little bit too much or a little bit mm. too over dramatic or something like that. Something that I can take home as constructive criticism and put it on the table and really work it up. And try it next time. Because dude. I can't see myself perform mm. improv. I used to tell my director, please stop recording us because we're not going to know what the fuck we were saying that right. day. Mm. And you might want to yeah. do it again. Then, no, she would want to take the recordings and then take them and put them into scenarios and make pieces out mm. of them. And which is a great creative way to come up with new stories and ideas to improvise. But it was also not in a format that was very, you know, very structural. Well, see, yeah. what I realized, too, is, is that some people, they get kind of, and they pussyfoot around it. They don't want to say something right. to you that might hurt your no, it's feelings. Good. It was yeah, good. yeah, yeah. When you hear the voice go up like that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Usually bullshit. Yeah, it sound like somebody squeezing their nuts. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> well, well. What? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, people tend to pussyfoot around some of the. But then when you give it to them, like, but then like a real honest response, some people go, you know, you're hating. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, hate it. And just dismiss you like that. I, I don't like that. You have to have a certain kind of mentality to be constructive. Especially if you're charging for it. No. Oh, if someone's right. paying oh, yeah. seven ninety nine to watch a shit oh, on yeah. demand, well, fuck. Then they have the reason. They they have every right to be like, I didn't enjoy that, or that wasn't for me, or yeah. You know, if you're charging money, like you, you're damn right. People have a right to speak up about it. Yeah. They, well, they, absolutely. I pay oh, my money. I should. <clears throat> then you gotta be kind of nice, like. Giving constructive criticism in person, I think, is different too. Like you can be nice about it. Mm. Oh yeah, you know, people. Let me tell you something. Like, Your fucking movie sucked, bro. Dude, like you gotta have the thick skin because mm. on the internet, people go nuts. Like I, like oh, some of the reviews worse. that people have said about you know some of my films over the years. Like you know, at, at first it would hurt a little bit, and then it kind of just gets funny over, and then over time. And then you're like, oh wow, and then like you see. Um, that, like you said, like people on the internet, there's something about that screen that's a protective layer. Right. Like they'll just like be the internet tough guys. Yeah, like you know, this, uh, I'm yeah. gonna sound like a like a corny like a little kid, but like sometimes it's just mean. <laughs> it's just like, uh, yeah. like that, you're not even being. This just, we're just being mean right now. Like you didn't even. This is beyond like you dislike the movie. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny. It's made me get to the point where like coming up, I was like every other film kid. I might see like something goofy, but. Like, that movie looks fucking dumb. That movie looks whatever. That's just, oh, right. I'll go yeah, another another dragon that breeds fire and takes over a town. It's just dumb. And, and now I'm at the point where like someone was hating on a movie. Like I was in the car with some friends the other day. They were like hating on something that's coming out. I hadn't even seen it yet. I was like, well, hey guys, you know, a lot of people worked hard on that movie. Maybe, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the best man Daryl worked on that. Maybe, maybe it wasn't wasn't even the director's fault. Maybe right. something else happened. Well, you're like yeah. friends with your friends on set, and you're like, ah. No, I'm yeah, like that yeah. with new pieces, like new theatrical pieces, because you a minute. You help create one, and then it's just like, guys, this this is not an easy thing to do. And then like mm, to hard. cast the right people to, especially when you're the writer, director, and at performing in it. It's very hard. It's like, uh, what was it like working with Paz? Um, did you get to did you, did you get to interact with him a lot? Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I, I got a chance to. Uh, write one of the early drafts of Paz um, way back when 
Uh, and I got to spend a lot of time with him. And it was, I'm a big boxing fan. So, like, right off the bat, it was cool to kind of just hear about um, some of the stories that he has and some of the things that he did. And what I always kind of found cool about Vinny Paz was he was kind of like a family business in a lot of ways. Like, I, I always loved the relationship that he had with his father and him. Mm. And his father, although it wasn't officially his manager, kind of acted like his manager at times. Oh. And would do things like in order to get the boxing community, you know, extra excited about a bout or something. He'd be like, "Well, we could have this fight at the Civic Center back when they called the Dunk the Civic Center, right, right. Right. and we could sell this thing out, and people would be hanging from the rafters." And uh, you know, Vinny would get these like huge, huge uh, crowds to come see him fight, and it was just cool to hear. Like, I love that time period for me. Like, I grew up. I'm like I'm a baby of the '80s, oh. kid of the early '90s. So like, you know, hearing stories about the early '90s and like. That era reminds me of being a little kid, and I remember being very, very little and hearing about Finney's broken neck, the car yeah. accident, and all that shit. I remember seeing that shit on the news. Yeah, and when you, it was all over Rhode Island. And when you think about what he did, I mean, uh, it, it really is the greatest comeback in sports history uh, to come back from a broken neck and play a sport where, hello, you get punched, punched in the, in the fucking head. head. Yeah. Right. And your so, neck goes back. Yeah, yeah, your neck snaps every time. Yeah. And, and I remember just one conversation, and this tells you you know, a little bit about boxers and what they deal with and what they go through, even from like a head trauma perspective. One day we were just sitting on his deck, and I was like, Vinny, how many times do you think you've taken a punch, you know, a shot to the head, a blow to the head? How many, you know? Oh. When you add up fights, sparring bouts, training just catching a punch you know during training and he was like tom was like, probably like at least a hundred thousand punches to the head you know like yeah oh, like, damn. Damn. <laughs> shots to the head. You think about it, i mean like he fought 60 professional fights you get hit like a couple hundred times every fight and right. then sparring and training and shit yeah. he fought for you know the guy fought he probably started when he was eight or nine i feel like and I'm, I'm pulling these numbers kind of out of my ass a little bit but i think oh. they're fairly accurate i think he fought from like 1984 to like 2000 2001 that's about, so like yeah, that do, about do that right. math man that's a lot of years oh. of training and forget about the fights in the ring just the training like the right. sparring with guys yeah like that's something that I learned from developing the movie. Like they'll bring guys in from all over town to you know just to to spar and stuff like that. It was cool. Uh, that movie's great. Chad Verdi did a great job with that movie. That was Chad's dream was to kind of make this uh, Benny Paz movie for a long time, and he saw it put together in pieces. Miles Teller did a tremendous, tremendous job. I like Miles Teller a lot. He's, man. He, he, he's a movie star. Ooh, nice that guy movie. too, man. Oh. That dude came out of nowhere and just. Boom. It was like, it wasn't, Big star. I, for me, it wasn't like no slow graduate. And then it was like, oh, this is this great movie. He just, just came on the scene and just skyrocketed. Man. Yeah. And he's a real deal guy. You know, like, uh, it was pretty funny just to, to kind of like see him in his element and just, uh, you know, like one of those things where not to put myself over, but I hadn't seen him for like a year or two almost. This was one of those movies where sometimes you make a movie and it doesn't come out for a long time for various marketing reasons. They're strategizing when to put it out at the right time. It was like two years later almost by the time we actually had the premiere and everything. And I remember like seeing him at the bar and like I'm, I'm, I'm sounding like I'm like, you know, a grade school girl right now. And I was like, is he going to remember me? You know, kind of like, the guy's a movie star. You know, he's like a huge movie star. I'm like, is he going to remember me? Like, you know, like I was in like a couple scenes with them, whatever. And I see him at the bar and he sees me. And he's like, Tommy, what's up, man? And I was just like, oh, wow, this guy's cool. You know what I mean? Like, right. he's a real guy. Like, even though we just hung out for a couple weeks during the filming of this movie. Feel even more. Yeah, so I got me. Oh, I remember he that. He gives a shit. <laughs> he gives a shit. It's <laughs> nice. He knows my like, name. One thing about show business and entertainment and, like, all this stuff is I realize that, like, sometimes you can go such a small, small distance to give a shit, mm. and it can mean so much to a person mm. just to be like, oh, I remember that person's name. You know, right. And you can use that with everything. Like, a production assistant who helps you park your car or whatever, and at the end of the night, if you're like, hey, thanks, Dave. Like, that means a lot to Dave. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? And, like, that's like a they little thing that... Give, that's where you get a fist bump. Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. like you say, say bye to the that's guy. That's my man. That's my night. man. You know, that can go a long way. I try to do that on all my sets, you know. A lot of times it's funny. Like, I find myself hanging out with, like, you know, the younger kids, like the PAs that are coming up more because they're, they're like, so eager at that point. They're just happy oh. to be there. Right. And it's just, it's cool to see that, like, that kind of fire. 
uh, on set. Um, oh. You know, you try to go the extra mile. Remember, you, little things like remember people's names goes a long way. What do you got coming up next? It's time to shamelessly self-promote. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I just shot a, a kid's movie. Um, nice. Which uh, we haven't revealed the name yet, but uh, I'm actually going out to L.A. to record John Lovitz, who's doing the voice of... Cool. It's an animated slash... Uh, Live action spy dog movie. Spy dog. So nice. basically, oh. he's a dog by day, regular family pet, and at night he turns into a crime fighting oh, secret so agent spy. Is dog. it McGruff? Is McGruff the crime dog? It's kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those things where <laughs> the Hannah Montana story of McGruff. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, shout out to Richard Switzer. He's the producer on this movie, and he uh, hired me to do this job. And oh. it's one of those things where, uh, you know. Kind of like, hey man, we need a, a talking dog script. Can you come up with one? Huh. And I was like, give me nine days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and nine we, you know, we, we, we came up with this like concept and threw it together quick. Dean Kane's in the movie. What? Yeah, he what? Was, TV Superman. Superman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dean Kane was awesome. He came in and um, average page count of a day when you shoot. You know, if, if you're on a smaller movie, like we shot this whole movie in 14 days, so the average page count you want to be hitting is like seven, eight pages. On Dean's days, we were shooting like 14 page days, like double time. And he was oh. just so professional and so on point, knew exactly where to be at all times, was making jokes, cracking jokes, being fun. Oh. Awesome fucking guy. Loved working with him. Ripley's Believe It or Not? Yes! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about yeah. that. Yep. Wow, man. I'm mad I know that much about Dean Kane. Dean Kane! Pop culture D wizard. Yeah, yeah. Dean Kane. Uh, no man. joke. Oh, I tried to um, But yeah, he was great, and uh, and I'm excited. We worked with a lot of great local actors, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know Fred Sullivan's a great local actor who's you know from mm -hmm. Rhode Island, and he got a chance to really shine in this movie. Um, and uh, Casey Seymour Kim, and just uh, a lot of a lot of nice. I always like to have a nice mix of local actors that like I, like you mentioned a lot of local. You do a lot of stuff in the theater around mm -hmm. here. I like to see a lot of plays too because there's so many people that are kind of just like hanging around in this local Rhode Island theater scene. There's so much talent around here. Yeah, yes. So I like to scout them out. That's why we're going to have to have a conversation later. You can give me a depth chart. Yes, sir. Give me a depth chart of you know who you think is. We're looking for some heavy hitters in these parts. All right. This guy. I'm, I'm heavy. Can I hit hard? <laughs> so. <laughs> we were talking about your batting cage experience earlier. Yeah, I can't I'm play. Sure about that. He, to, he went for your speed. I can't <laughs> play. I uh, can't play any baseball players. But, uh, you know, anything else? <laughs> well, I don't like that, man. I'll definitely keep that in mind. We'll get you guys in, into a cameo. There's a chance that... So, guys, you, something you got to learn about me is I'm a little bit of a maniac. I'm kind of a workaholic. Oh. I don't sleep very much. I, I sleep about... This is no bullshit because people say they don't sleep, but it, they're, they're usually lying to you. Oh. I sleep you know, four and a half hours a night. That's no joke. That's legit. That's, you know, that's what I do. Sometimes nap for about a half an hour late afternoon, but I'm very functional that way. I'm working all the time. Huh. Um, so I have a movie that we're going to shoot in October around here. It's going to be like a thriller. Um, I'm excited about that one. We'll have more info on that soon. So maybe we'll get, we'll get you guys some cameos. And oh, that one. Yeah, I, I, I can push a lady out the way. Get out my way, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Has that been a lifelong dream? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it on the Living Color one time. I saw it on the Living Color one time. It'd be one of those things know, where we way, get bitch. the camera on you, you forget your line. You're like, get right. out of my. Get out of. Fuck, what do I say? What <laughs> Move, bitch! Move! Oh, wait, like, no, it's get out of my way, bitch! Yeah, these you know, pretzels are making me thirsty. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> To shine. Tom oh. Danucci in the house, yes, guys. Tom Danucci. Thanks yes, for coming indeed. out. Thank you for hanging out with us. Have you. Appreciate you. Yes, indeed. Follow me on go, Instagram. Go see Volt. Volt. At Tom Danucci. You can follow me on Instagram. It's at T O M D E N U C C I. And you can check out Vault on demand on all your platforms. Uh, and coming out on Blu ray August, August 13th. 13th. Yeah. yeah. And we got the poster autographed by a bunch of people. Yes. Yeah, yes. More sites on there, buddy. More Providence. Side. I can't believe I've been this close to somebody that we'll was get close to Don Johnson. Right? Yeah. Yep. Don Johnson. Don Johnson. Oh, uh, yes. The whole Don gang. Theo Rossi. Clive Standing. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got the whole gang. I didn't even ask Samira you, Chaz Palamentary? Yeah, Chaz. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll do a part two, guys. Oh, yeah, we'll man. Two. Yeah, most of them we got to do a part two. We're the surface of oh, this onion. My favorite line was when she was like, should I do that again? <laughs> she, she didn't want to get that cup. Uh, he kept, he kept I'm glad you actually watched the movie. Yeah, man. 
I did think, I figured maybe, you know, sometimes people no, don't actually watch that. Watch that. No, I've watched that movie, man. Like, how? You actually know? watched the movie. Oh, yeah. Like, first, he wasn't first I seen it, they said that, yo, you heard about the movie that motherfuckers robbed in the Superman building. I'm like, motherfuckers robbed the Superman building? <laughs> I didn't know the story. Then they went and said, then I went to do the research. And I'm just like, oh, shit. This is. Yeah, this, I saw them downtown because I, like, I work at the Textron building. So I, I was used to this. Because he was, I don't think he was mayor yet. No, but he wasn't. He, hmm. But it was, he his he first was. mayoral reign, like, like uh, thing was, it was in during the that time. Yeah, it was during, during that time. time. But so even though like, he wasn't involved, he wasn't like, involved. I'm like, yeah, oh. he, he wasn't like, yeah. I'll let this happen if you wet my beak a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was a bitch. My bad, guys. But uh, it's okay. Saturday morning, Saturday conversation. Yes, Sunday, indeed. DJ came in. DJ yeah, I Monkey, Monkey. Chocolate Swagamente, special guest Tom Tanucci. Yes, What's indeed. Up? See you guys. See later. the movie if you haven't seen the movie. Yes, episode indeed. 43. We out. Once again. Dennis Eckersley. Ha, 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 ha.